Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and Fog of War on the screen. We've got the Fog of War Kickstarter, just a day more to get on board. Do think about joining in. If you don't get it now, it will cost more later, that's certain. Um, and you get a, an e-book delivered to you with a brilliant story by Peter C. Hayward, brilliant illustrations by Hayley Mooney and brilliant puzzles by... Sandra and Nala with some extras thrown in now because we've had so many pledges. Thank you so much to everyone from the likes of Fistafel, Fistafel, Fistamafel, Jay Dyer, Analytical Ninja, Zeon Risk, Math Pesto, Chili. I mean, the list is just awesome. Do check it out. Please join us. Um, give it a go. And uh, thank you very much to everybody who has already. You are stars. As are the people on Patreon who've completed the Snack Doku Challenge. That is what's going on there at the moment. Um, and fantastic it is too. Now, there's loads going on. That, that is a 100 puzzle 4x4 four four challenge and very popular. There's also other stuff on Patreon, including hard crosswords and Sudoku solves. Now, extra bonus videos on the channel. We've got um, the... The Jane Street puzzle this morning, that's up there now. The, it's a O Camels puzzle hunt puzzle. We've got, we're doing Chance of Senar every Tuesday. I think there's a GCHQ challenge coming. Um, loads going on. I mean, I had a very busy day yesterday and barely kept on top of everything. But there is much going on around the channel and uh, you're welcome to all of it. Uh, we're hoping you have a great festive period. Now, I'm going to be looking... Oh, there's also, of course, all our apps and our merchandise and Spencer Doku Bed. Look on the links under the, under the puzzle. But um, do look at the puzzle because it has completely covered Fog of War grid, which is weird. This is by GDC, who's always... Or no, who's regularly very difficult. And I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. But... I'm absolutely terrified of it at the same time. So let's have a look at the rules of the puzzle. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Somehow we're going to put one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Hurrah. Uh, the grid is covered in fog and placing correct digits reveals clues in the surrounding three by three area. If the grid is rotated 180 degrees, the matching cells add up to 10. Um, so those two must add up to 10. And this is a way you can create Sudoku grids. Um, the central cell adds to itself to make 10. Aha. Digits an equal distance from, right, we're gonna reveal some lavender zipper lines and digits an equal distance from the center of the zipper line sum up to the digit in the center of that line. I don't know why center appears once in that sentence and middle, uh, because it's the same place. So if you have a eight in the middle of the zipper line, the two cells either side of it add up to eight, and then the two cells at the ends add up to eight, and so on. Uh, we've also got green lines. Adjacent digits on a green line differ by five or more. The zipper line digits are lavender normally, sort of a purpley color. All lines are exactly five cells long, only move, move orthogonally, and don't share cells with other lines. Wow, they only move orthogonally, so no diagonal movements. Okay. Well, okay, give it a go on the link under the puzzle. I am going to start now. And I'm going to start, you know, although I think that is a clarifying point about the central cell, it clearly is a very useful point. If the central cell plus itself adds up to 10, it's a 5. And there we go. This is, this is where we get some lines, lots of lines. So this is a five cell zipper line. Can I, I'm going to, I'm going to use the pen tool and create the full line because I can basically see where it's going. Now that means that the two cells either side of that add up to five. Um, now we've got a German whisper line and this is also five cells long, isn't it? So. Might as well draw the whole thing in for myself. <clears throat> um, oh, these cells are also from one, two, three, four to add up to five. But what's going on this? These two are the same polarity. K 
Can they be low? Must they be low? I don't know. Do I know? This is all I've got to go on, so I must know something about it that I don't understand. If they were low. Well, that one can't be four because it sees digits both sides that would both have to be nine and would break Sudoku rules. So if these were both low, that could be a four. Oh, but we've got... Oh, of course, I had forgotten. I'd forgotten the rule entirely, hadn't I? The, the rotational rule. That plus that equals ten. So this is high. Oh, that's very clear. Right, so these are low. This one can't be four. Now, we can also do the rotational thing. These are high digits opposite the low ones. This is a high digit as well. Okay. Now, this can't be six because those would both have to be ones. This German whisper makes this digit high. This could be six. That makes this one low. This is high on the whisper. That could be six. This is low. Oh, this is kind of an admin hell, isn't it? Um, and we put that in as low, so this is high. I've forgotten that. We put that in as low, so this is high. Now, how are we going to actually find numbers? Right, these two add up to 5, so these two add up to 15. That's interesting. So this can't be a 9 anymore. I don't know, I'm just... So... <laughs> It's not about these lines, is it? Um, ah, this can't be the central digit of this line because it's lower than that. So the line must go on past this. One, two, three. Oh, this can't be the third digit, but this could be the fifth cell, fourth, third. That could be higher. I'm not sure. This is indeed the zip of the iceberg now. Come on, what else can we figure out? Oh, the, these two add up to five. So these two also add up to five because the four low digits add up to ten. These two add up to five. That's interesting. So if they were a two, three pair, this would have to be eight or nine. And if they were a 1, 4 pair, this would have to be 9. So that is 8 or 9. This is now 1 or 2. To make the 5 sum, that's 3 or 4. This is now 6 or 7 as a result of that. Yeah, this is weird. I keep making extra conclusions when I just think I've run out of anything else to do. Um, now this is just a German whisper line. There's no, there's no zipper aspect to it. That is a zipper line. I feel like that is the middle, but it's not certain to me. That's not the middle of the line. Okay, let's at least draw the, the length of the lines I'm seeing here. Now, what's going on? Come on, can I prove this is nine, which would clear some fog at least? If that was eight, these would be a two, three pair. You'd have one here and four here. What would be wrong with those being a two, three pair? Not sure. One of these is six or seven. Surely I haven't got anywhere apart from box five where I've got four highs or four lows. I definitely haven't yet. Um, 
Mind you, I have got three lows in this row. I don't know what to do with that. I don't, maybe I have to, th okay, this minus this gives us this, which is somewhere between eight and two. That's a huge, huge range. And that, this is therefore somewhere between two and eight as well on the on the rotation. I'm not using the rotation enough. That must be the problem. That must be the problem. Um, but I do not see how I meant to use it. Eight, nine, there. Oh, come on, this whisper, tell me something about you. If that was a three, that would be an eight, nine pair. We'd have a seven there, six there. This would be an eight. I mean, it's intriguing what the ramifications would be. Oh, hang on. If that's a three, that's a four, that's a one, that's a nine. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Right, let's... Let's ponder that a little. Oh, this can't be opposite its, its complement from 10. So that can't be two opposite eight, because if that's a two, that's an eight. Oh, this is weird. Okay, if that's a one, this is nine. So if this is a one, that's eight, that's two, that's three, and eight would be next to four. This can't be a one. Oh, this is a strange old puzzle. Now, if that's a two, it's next to nine because eight would be over here. If it's a three, well, this can't be six anymore, so this can't be four. You have to keep picking these off bit by bit. One, now I've got that down to two or three. This is seven or eight. If that was one, this couldn't be nine. If it was two, it couldn't be eight. If it was two, that would be three, that would be eight. But two would need eight there, right. Hang on, I'm wrong. If it was two, that would be three, that would be nine. This would be 718. That would work fine, this being 2. If this was 3, that would be 2, 8, 7, 1, 4, 6, and 9. That would be fine. Now, if this was 4, that would be 9, that would be 1, and that would be 4. No good. So now the only place for 4 in the box is here. Wow! That took some doing. Is that much easier than that? Probably is. Now, I'm doing all sorts of things to digits in this grid and not following up with their complements. So four is opposite six. Let's do that. One is opposite nine. Oh, we get lots of fog cleared away suddenly. Um, two or three is opposite seven or eight. This can't be a one. This is seven or eight. Now, this can't be four anymore. Just doing some Sudoku first. This can't be nine. Now we've got six, seven, or eight, opposite two, three, four. One, two, three, this can't be six. It's seven, eight, or nine. This can't be six, and that can't be four. That followed hand in hand. One, two, three, versus seven, eight, nine. Okay, now we know the length of this line. It's been exposed a bit. We know about a German whisper here, which is even more interesting in some ways. Um, oh, and this line up here, no, wrong colour. Now, the one, t oh, that couldn't be the centre, but it couldn't anymore. Can that be the centre? This would have to be a nine. With a one or a two there, yeah, that would work. Okay, this is a low digit. Let's do that next. It can't be a four because of the line, it would need nines on either side. This must be a one, because it can't be two or three, so that's a one. It's got a nine opposite by the, by the rule. 
Now, that 9 is now the center of its line, which we can tell in every way we need to. That 7 or 8 needs a 1 or a 2 there. That's opposite an 8 or a 9 here. Well, we, I mean, it's really interesting when we learn these new things about, about a rule set. This is low, and it can't be 1 or 4. That's 2 or 3. Opposite, 8 or 9, which is clearly the center. No, 8 or 7, which is the center of this line. This is high, 7, 8 or 9. This is low, 1, 2 or 3. And that is that plus that equals that, somewhere between 7 and 4. So I'm writing 4, 5, 6, 7 in there, which allows me to write 6, 5, 4, 3 in here. But this can't be a 3 because of the 2, 3 pair, so that can't be a 7. I should have spotted that. This can't be a 1. This cell can't be a 9, therefore. Ooh. And this can't go 7, 3. which means this can't go 3, 7. The other combinations are all possible. 3, 8 would lead to a 5 here. 2, 8 would lead to a 6, which is not possible. 2, 7 would lead to a 5 here. So this has to be 5. Wow, that's a 5. Now we know the length of this line as well. No, we don't. We, know that we do know its length. We don't know where it goes in the fog. This is the center, though. It has to be higher than this, but not as high as that. So 7 or 8 there, 6 or 7 before it. This now can't be 2. That's 3 or 4. This is 1 or 2 on its line. This, by the rotational rule, is 8 or 9. We've got an 8-9 pair here now. Ooh, this puzzle's crazy. Seven or eight there needs to be matched by two or three over this side. And is the center of the line. This is one or two. And that is opposite eight or nine up here. Then we're going to need a two or three, either there or there, on our orthogonal line. I can't see which one it has to be. There probably is a way. One of those is definitely a one. Oh, no, we've got this other. This is lower than eight. Sees a lot of low digits already. Now, on this line, look, that is the complement of one, two, or three. So that is eight, seven, or six, and that is opposite this cell, which is therefore 2, 3, or 4. And this line needed a 2 or a 3, so it could easily be there. Pity. This is weird, weird, weird puzzle. Um, right, this is less than 8, and it's not 6 or 5. I mean, that is... Ah, it's also not 7, because I can't put a 1... Oh, look, I can't put 2, 3, or 1 here. So this is 4, 5, or 6. I also can't put 7 or 8 there. That is 4, 5, or 6, leaving this to be somewhere between 3... No, somewhere between 1 and 4. That's interesting, because that's quite low, and we've got now a 1, 2, 3, 4 quad. These are from 6, 7, 8, 9. That means these are from 1, 2, 3, 4. This is high, 6, 7, 8, or 9. Still, this line could go either way to its ultimate 2 or 3 conclusion. This, I don't know, it feels like it could well be a 4, 4 pair. Don't know why. Um, if that was a 7, this would be a 2. That would be 8, this would be 1, that would be 2, that would be 3. There's weird consequences going on. This can't be 9, so that can't be 1. <coughs> wow. 
what a weird puzzle this is. Nine, seven, eight. Oh, look, these can't be from one, two, three either. So they're four, five, or six. That's a triple. This is seven or eight, opposite two or three, which are a pair there. Two, three, nine, one, seven, eight. This is four, five, or six. But none of these are apparently on lights, although this line carries on, doesn't it? That's maybe interesting now. This is the centre of the line. So it either goes there, leaving a total somewhere between one and four, or it goes here, leaving somewhere between four and six. I'm going to write in the possibilities because why not? And they are opposite this, which is 9, 8, 7, 6, or 4. Now, I probably haven't narrowed something down. Maybe, uh, maybe I just need to do Sudoku. If that is a 3, then this is an 8, 9 pair. On the whisper. Then that's 7 surrounded by one and two, and that would be three. This would definitely be five or six. Oh, come on, this is either seven, two or eight, three, making this either eight, two or seven, three. This can't be seven, three. Right, have I got that the right way round? No, I haven't, I haven't. If this is an eight, that's a three. Then these two are two and seven, which is legal. If that's a seven, that's a two. Then these two are three and eight, and that is legal. So all I know here is that those are exactly five apart. <sighs> Tempted to use a curse word. That can't be six, so this can't be four. Hmm. I think the whispers are the key. If that was seven, this is two. Then we'd have three and eight up here, and that would be nine. Ah, oh, if that was seven, that would be eight, and that would be nine. Oh, let's carry that thought on. If that was seven, Eight here would make that a seven and that a two. So if this was seven, we'd have a two here and an eight here and a three here, which is what we'd need. Um, Okay, I'm going to think about if this is a four. There are only two places for four here. If that's a four, this can't be seven because that can't be three. So if that's a four, this is eight and that's a four. Then we've got fours in both those positions. And that would have to be a four. That would have to be a four. So these would be all fours in that case. Um, I'm looking at the sixes opposite just to see that they don't fail for some reason. They, they weirdly do. No, maybe not. If this was a four, And that was a four. We would then have, okay, I'm going to try and catch the opposites as I fly. Six is there, 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 and there would result. This would then have to go five, seven, eight, one, and hit a three. Oh, I can't see what's... Ah, oh, for this to be a one, that's quite interesting, because there's only two possibilities for one here. If this was a one, that has to be a seven, and this has to be a six. And that's then a two. 
So if that's a 1, this goes 7 to 6. Uh, this doesn't work. That's very interesting. If this is a 1, that's a 7 and that's a 6. But it makes this an 8. And the 1 there has made this a 4. And now we need 1s twice in row 3. Once to make up the complement of 9 and once to make up the complement of 5. That's weird. So this is not a 1. The 1 in box 4 is there. That is opposite a 9 on the on the the in the rotation. On its zipper line, it's got an 8 there, which is opposite a 2 here. Yes, it is. This will do it, I think. That puts a 7 on the center of the zipper line, which has also got a 6 and a 1 on. This is an 8. Now, we can fill in some of these numbers over this side, thanks to the rotational symmetry. I love how fast it is when you get that sort of thing going. On the zipper, this has become a 1. That makes this a 2 by Sudoku, 7 here, 8 here. We can do the rotation in the central box. This has become a 7 by Sudoku. Loads going on now. Now, 82917, translate that down here to 2, 8, 1, 9, 3. And that's correct. These are obviously all matched up. Okay, that's good. This is now a 6, 6, 8, 7, which must be matched by 3, 2, 4. It's weird how I'm speaking the language a bit now. This has become an 8. That's a 2, therefore. This is clearing fog. Um, this is a 7, so that must be a 2 on the whisper. And then I can just do this by Sudoku. It's probably easier than, than speaking the language of zippers and whispers. That's a 6 on the zipper though. And that's opposite a 4. And they both see this cell which is a 5, um, which I could have done by the zipper. And the central three columns are suddenly done. Right. Now out in the corner boxes I've only got these places pencil marked. But I know what this is now. It's 8 minus 2. That's a 6. Opposite a 4. Um, surely there's a naked single. There is one there. That's a three. Opposite a seven. <sighs> Do I really need more clues? That's surprising. Well, I'm going to use them. This has got a seven on it, along with a one or a two. This is, in fact, a naked one. It sees two in the box and seven in the row. So that's a two seven pair. In fact, we know the order. OK. So I can finish this column in reverse. Nine, three, eight. That must be right. Oh, look, we're going to get matching zipper lines, maybe. No, no, not quite. Um, right, what goes next to an eight? Either... 3, 2, or 1. So that's a 1. That's a 9. Uh, this is low, and it has to be 1. That's opposite 9. This corner is not 1, 3, or 4, so it's 2. This corner is therefore 8. Oh, I like that we're getting to a finish. Now this, the last line in the puzzle, has to be a 6, opposite a 4. That, hang on, hang on. Um, I saw the digits in one box and then read them in the other. Not clever. Five, seven, and nine there. There we go. And three, and six, and five, and six. That is the zip of the iceberg. Brilliant puzzle by GDC. Great fun. I hope you had a go at it. That was very entertaining. And very head-wrecking, but most enjoyable. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon on the channel. Bye for now.